Welcome to Planetary Imaging using ICAP. This is ICAP, the software that is used to control the Next Image 5 webcam. For you to follow along, you'll need to select the same toolbars that I have. Under the View menu, select Toolbars. I have selected Main Toolbar, Device Bar, Recording Bar, and Exposure Bar. The output of ICAP is typically a very large ABI file. You'll want to know where the file is on your hard drive, so later when you run your stacking software, you'll know where to find it. You tell ICAP where to put your ABI files via the Recording Settings window. You can bring this window up by pressing the rightmost icon on the recording bar. On the Video File tab, I have selected Enable Automatic Video File Name Generation. You put the output folder name here where it says Target Directory. This is where your large AVI files will go. I have also selected Timestamp and the Year, Month, Date, Hour, Minute, Second option. You only need to do this once. ICAP will remember these settings and for me, they are what I want for everything I do. The only thing I have to change is the file name prefix. I use the planet name, so when I switch to a different planet, I have to remember to change the file name prefix. Now, onto the Advanced tab. Here, there are two options for how to stop the recording of the ABI file. I found that you can't get too many frames, but you can record for too much time. Jupiter only takes 10 hours to spin around once, so it rotates over a degree in just two minutes. I would say to record for a minute or two or three. If you have an alt as mount, then field rotation might become a factor. This is something you should experiment with. This setting is also something that you might want to change for different planets. Mars takes over 24 hours to rotate, so you can record for over twice as long for Mars. The next image 5 webcam has 5 million pixels. To use all of them, we select 2592 by 1944 from this drop-down menu in the device bar. Notice how when we're in this mode, we have scroll bars on our window. The entire picture cannot be seen full scale. To see the whole picture, we switch the view size from 100% to 20% in the drop-down menu that is on the main toolbar. Now we're using all the pixels and the whole picture has been reduced to fit on the screen. The view size drop down menu on the main toolbar changes how big the picture will appear on the screen only. It does not affect what will be captured while recording. The capture size drop down menu on the device bar allows you to select a subregion for recording to the AVI file. There are nine different sizes going from 640 by 480 up to the maximum of 2592 by 1944. For capturing our thousands of frames, we'll be using the 640 by 480 size because we want to capture at the fastest frame rate and planets are small. In 640 by 480 though, the field of view is very tiny, so it's nice to be able to use all the pixels for finding the planet. Once we find the planet and center it, we then switch to 640 by 480. If we lose the planet, we then have to go back to using all the pixels to again find and center the planet. It would be nice if there was a single button to toggle back and forth, but instead we have to select from two different drop-down menus each time. To find the planet, we use the 20% view size and max pixel size. For capturing, we use the 100% view size and 640x480. Here's a tip to speed things up. Always change the view size first and then the pixel size. This actually only matters when switching to 640x480, but it's just easier to always do it this way. Here's why. I'll switch to 640x480 and then switch to 100% view size. Notice how we end up with a tiny window with scroll bars. We then have to resize the window with the mouse. You can save that step by changing to 100% view size 
and then to 640 by 480. Notice when we're in the 640 by 480 mode, we can select up to 52 frames per second. Of course, we won't get 52 frames per second unless our exposure time is less than 1 52nd of a second. ICAP forces us to use 1 60th of a second or less to get the maximum 52 frames per second. There should be no frames per second setting in ICAP. It should just give you the maximum possible given the exposure setting and not give you any choice. You could just try always setting it to 52 and hope that it won't screw up. I suspect that it might screw up though if your exposure is greater than 1 52nd of a second and you ask for 52 frames per second by giving you more frames than possible in the form of duplicate frames. At the very least, this would make your output file larger than necessary. For finding the planet, we switch to the wide view, 20% view size and 2592 by 1944 pixel size. Notice that when in this mode, you can only get 6 frames per second. In addition to changing the view size and capture size, we may also want to change the gain and exposure so that the image is way overexposed. If we haven't yet found good focus, the planet may be extremely dim. So ideally, we would have a single button that toggles between narrow view and wide view and causes the image to be overexposed when in the wide view. Fortunately, we do have such a button. It's the binning button. Just always stay in the 640 by 480 mode, 100% view size. We select 4x binning for finding the planet. You'll get full view and the image will be overexposed. Just what we want for finding the planet. Then we center the planet and disable the binning. Using the default color values, we get a picture that is too green. We can change that by selecting properties from the device menu. On the color tab, change the three edit boxes to 110, 88, and 116. and make sure that the Color Enhancement Enable checkbox is checked. This gives a more natural color. I do this because I don't like looking at a green picture on the screen. I now use the Y800 codec, which ignores the color settings so my capture file is back to being too green. I then have to adjust the color in Registax. ICAP comes with these four codecs. The default codec is DV Video Encoder. This codec compresses the image using a lossy compression scheme. It's nice that the file size is smaller, but the compression results in artifacts which appear when sharpening the final image. Planetary imagers always recommend using a non-compressing codec. If you decide to use the default codec, at least realize that it changes the aspect ratio of your picture. It turns your 640x480 image into a 720x480 image. The resulting planet is not round. Some people can watch a 4x3 movie stretched to widescreen and not notice that all the people and cars are extra wide, but it drives me nuts. Please at least resize your final image so your planet is round. The RGB24 and RGB32 codecs do not compress, but they have been debared by ICAP, and this makes the files three and four times larger than what you get with the Y800 codec without giving you any additional information. The Y800 codec will give you the raw data from the camera, which is one byte per pixel. When you view it, you won't see any color. The stacking software will get your color back. I now switch to the Y800 codec. I highly recommend using the Y800 codec. ICAP makes it a bit tricky by allowing you to think you have Y800 when you don't or your Y800 has lost the color information and you can't get it back later. To make it work, be sure you see Y800 in both the codec drop-down menu on the recording bar and in the pixel size selection on the drop-down menu in the device bar.
Also, make sure that you do not see a color image on the screen. This newer version of iCap has a D-Bear option on the main toolbar. If you turn it on, you'll see color on the screen, but your AVI file will become monochrome with no color information at all. Notice that if you want to use RGB24, you need to select Show All Video Formats from the View menu. This will allow RGB24 to show up in the pixel size drop down menu. Now I will take you through the steps to capture your image. Make sure you have the correct planet name for the file name prefix and have selected the amount of time you want the video to record. Select 100% view size and Y800 640 by 480. To find the planet, select 4X binning. If you're not sure if you have good focus or you're otherwise worried the planet might be too dim to show up, then max out the gain and increase the exposure time to something definitely too bright. We can see a highly overexposed planet drift across the screen, but not one that is too dim. We find the planet and get it somewhat in focus. Move the telescope to center the planet as best you can and then disable the binning. Make sure you're in focus. Now change the gain and exposure so our image is not overexposed. Watch my video on histogram for more tips. To bring up the histogram, you just click on the histogram icon on the main toolbar. Here are some numbers to start with. This is only a guess and you need to experiment. You'll need different settings with different focal ratios. Before you hit record, check all the settings. You want to see Y800 in two places and no color in the screen image. If you see color, then make sure that D-Bear is turned off. Check the gain, exposure, and frames per second to make sure they are what you want. Make sure binning is disabled. Now press record. The camera will start recording. You'll have to keep the planet in the tiny field of view the whole time. The recording will stop when a limit has been reached where you hit stop or pause. Now that you've added a gigabyte file to your hard drive, I suggest you do it a few more times with slightly different settings of exposure and or gain. Write down what you did so you can home in on the optimal settings. This is the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more, then click on one of the four quadrants of this screen to watch another video. I have one on finding the planet, histogram, exposure, gain, etc. And finally, you can click on the bottom right to go to my planetary imaging playlist, which has all of my planetary imaging videos so far.